Hey, this is uh, Steven from Steven's Closet Garage, and today uh, I'm going to start video one out of a three video series talking about the uh, Mark I Volkswagen Rabbit uh, from, I guess it was 1975 or something, to 1984, uh, front brake swap to the biggest that they had in that generation. So it's still like period correct, sort of but um, it's from like a basically swapping US brakes, US rapid brakes onto the German uh, made um, European uh, rabbits, so from Germany. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the costs, the benefits uh, and things like that. So this video is gonna be called The Briefing. Um, hopefully, I wanted to shoot it today, but it didn't happen. Uh, hopefully I get, um, uh, get to the car and I'm gonna do a little checkup on it, uh, on the brakes, uh, probably tomorrow. Um, I'm go heading to a interview first and then, uh, probably when I get back, I will, uh, uh, put the car up and, uh, take a look at it because I'll have, uh, more space on the, in the driveway because parents won't be home at that point. So yeah, but this is going to be debriefing and then we're going to do a second video, which I'm going to show you guys it on the car for maybe 12 minutes or something like that. And then the third video is going to be uh, my, basically my, probably a couple weeks after that. And I'll bring, take the car, uh, take the tires off, show you guys it again, and give you guys my uh, definitive opinion on whether it was worth it and whether I suggest you guys do it as well. So uh, I would suggest waiting until that video to uh, do this mod, uh, because then I will give my, go. I'll give my, uh, uh, I mean, you could do it if you want, you know, you're, you're your own person, but um, I would wait until I recommend it. Right now, it is definitely running really well, but uh, we'll see if I have any sort of unseen complications, and then I'll save you guys money, time, and possible uh, damage to either yourself uh, or your vehicle, or your vehicle and yourself included. So, uh, this is going to be debriefing. It's going to be all from pictures. Uh, tomorrow or sometime maybe even next weekend we'll look at the car and then we'll have a final uh, a final review or final thoughts uh, as the third video on this series so number one um, the brakes so why do this mod so the brakes on the European model are very uh, generally they're they're very spongy so uh, I have basically if you have a German made rabbit and oh, so basically let's talk about the scope of this. So this is if you have a German made rabbit and I believe up to uh, that has certain calipers right that has these certain calipers this is a uh, decent upgrade and it will give you uh, more stability of braking especially if you're doing it in some sort of race application or a high performance application or if you do a motor swap or if you're doing a turbo uh, a turbo swap like I'm going to do, uh, this is a big thing to do in this application. Uh, and I highly suggest that you do it. Well, oh, sorry, don't listen to that. Uh, I'm not gonna make that right. I'm not gonna make that recommendation until the third video. So wait until the third video, which I would have had the brakes. I've had the brakes now for two weeks. Um, actually, two weeks or one week. Might only be one week. Um, so I would wait until I give you guys uh, the go-ahead in about two weeks or so before uh, doing this. But I'm going to talk about you guys. I'm going to talk about the swap here, um, and then the third video I'll say whether I recommend this or something else. So uh, this is really good for certain brake calipers upgrading because again, like I said, this is to a caliper that is uh, in a similar year in style, but out of the U.S. Rabbits and I'm going to explain the differences and why you should go about doing it. So um, this will improve as far as I've seen so far. Again, oh wait till the last video, and that's probably, probably gonna say that a couple more times, but uh, wait till the last video for the recommendation. Um, as far as right now, it does seem that it is an improvement. Now, whether that improvement will stay or it will have other unforeseen complications that you have to deal with, and those outweigh the improvements uh, have yet to be seen. 
So maybe in a couple weeks I'll be able to do that. And also I'll keep you guys posted in the comment section if there in the comment sections and in the description if there is a complication. And at some time, maybe a year down the line or whatever, I do not recommend this anymore. I will mention that. So uh, basically I have some pictures here. And so this swap is for certain calipers. So in the year uh, in that year mark one, and this is all from the uh, this is all from the Bentley book, which I highly suggest you get. It looks like this, and you could get it for the uh, diesel, or you could get it for the gas. And these these uh, brake pads are the same for pretty much uh, all the Mark ones, whether you have gas or diesel, or whether you have Caddy or the regular Rabbit. So uh, go ahead, and uh, th this is from this is pictures from that book. It is definitely the best book you could get. I highly suggest you get it, whether it's a reproduction or original. I have an original, but that's okay. So the most popular brake caliper for the um, for the German-made uh, brake calipers is called the ATE, otherwise known as the TEVS. And basically, the easiest way to know is that it has this like slope to it. And I'll show you an actual picture of the one that came off my car so you could be able to look at it because there are three different types of calipers and one of which is the one that we're actually going to install so this is one this is the ATE caliper right and basically how you can distinguish it is you could distinguish it from the top from the front because basically these guys they face on the front side of the car uh, the front of the rabbits and the caddies are disc brakes and the back are drums so in the front uh, the disc brakes actually face the outside of the car and um, the front of the car. The calipers are pointing towards the front. So if you look at the front of the car, you should be able to see this, uh, which is a clip. There's like this clip that goes across and then you'll see the pads here and then you'll see like these things press through. So this is a dead giveaway that it is a Teves and also it has this curved casting that holds the the brake calipers here so you'll see this piece here this kind of guard around it so that's a dead giveaway of a Teves ATE caliper the second one is a Girling, which is a very big caliper this is more like a later year um, and this came on very few of the cars but uh, this one is this is the front side you can see there's a bolt here very characteristic here very different from the Teves it has a similar shape here but uh, very different. Now both the Teves and the Girling both use uh, the same pads. So I'll show you guys that in a second. Now this is what we're swapping it with. We're swapping it with a Kelsey Hayes caliper. So this is what the caliper that we are swapping it to. So this is gonna be the new caliper that will be on the car after the swap. Now this is from like a post 80s uh, Rabbit Mark One Rabbit from the U.S. only. So, so this was a uh, Kelsey Hayes made U.S. calipers. They also have it on my other car. They made calipers for my other car, a 1960 uh, Mustang. So they also made brake calipers for the Mustang. So uh, it was for it was an American company, Kelsey Hayes. So this is that guy that you're looking at there. So um, and basically these are what the pads look like on the. Uh, the girling, uh, the girling and the teves, the ATE. Most likely you have the ATE, the teves, which is what I had on my car. And these are very, very small. These are about uh, maybe like two inches wide. And let me show you what those look like uh, inside a caliper that I took off my car. So, uh, sorry, that was my brother. So this is basically the pad here, and then this guy is about, let me see. This caliper, I mean, this pad is about maybe an inch and a half wide. So this is about an inch and a half wide, and these are three quarter inches thick here. And you can see that I have uneven wear. So this is off my car, you can see it's a Teves. You can kind of see this curved shape, and these are the pads that the Teves had. And then these are the, the the slots that if these slots go past here it'll cause vibrations and then you know to change the pad actually I think the these on that other picture I showed you they have like a little lip thing that grinds into it I haven't really looked too much into these 
and they're still actually in the caliper itself. And we're going to talk about what we could do with this uh, caliper after. So, um, this these are the pads that you'd have on a girling and a teeth. So these are small. So for modern day, they're like the size of a motorcycle uh, pad. Uh, my brother makes a joke that when I showed it to him, uh, because my neighbor uh, who inspired me to get the rabbit also has a rabbit, he had an extra one because he swapped to a Brembo brake kit. And uh, he, sh he gave it to me and I'm like, this thing is tiny because I haven't looked at it in the meantime. So uh, that's, what we, uh, that's what we have on the car. Now, so this is most likely what you have is you have these little motorcycle, uh, these little motorcycle size pads. Now, basically they're gonna um, they're gonna take massive amounts of heat here because there's the 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 friction's not spread over a bigger area. It's it's not gonna have as much, and, and basically you're gonna have a lot of heat concentrated in a small area. So you're not gonna be able to spread the heat or, uh, along a bigger pad and it's gonna cause uh, the material to heat up faster. And also, you don't have as much meat on it as far as width, so it's not gonna last as long as a bigger pad. Now, this is what we are swapping to. So these are the pads that are on the uh, Ke uh, Kelsey Hayes. So these are the old pads and these are the new pads that I got. These are ceramic pads, and you can kind of see the copper or brass. It should be copper, but the copper on the ceramic pads. And uh, I'll show you guys that as well. So uh, these are the original ones that came on the calipers that I bought off a, um, a rabbit, and I'll show you where I got those. And so these are what we're swapping to. And these are about, I don't know, these are about three inches of pad. I'd say even more, maybe even three and a half inches of pad. These are a normal car size pad. So pretty much what we're doing is we're uh, two and a half to three times the the pad size, right? And I'll show you guys uh, tomorrow on the car. Uh, the I'll, I'll have the pads next to me and I'll show you guys on the car the size difference. And because uh, I'll show you guys the hands on. And I'll have all that stuff laying there so I can just show you and show you what uh, the difference. So these are about two and a half to three times, and I'll show you that uh, to, um, when I film the second part of the series. So now we have we have temperature spread out over bigger area. We have uh, more pad that uh, will eventually wear. And also we've changed from organic to uh, ceramic material. And I'll talk more about that selection later. So, and you can see these, these little alligator claws are kind of the signature of the Kelsey Hayes pads. So, that's what we are swapping to. Now, the number one thing that you need to do, which I forgot to um, um, set up here to show you guys. Now, the approximate full cost, so that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to increase pad uh, width, and also one other thing, we're going to change from solid discs to vented discs. So this is what most likely your car has. It's called a solid disc. It's right here. It's about a uh, half an inch in thickness and it is on the front of the car and you can see here the reason why they call it solid is that there it's just basically a solid piece of material now we are swapping to a vented disc now here's another view of that so you can see here here's a solid and this is the the ATE uh, the, T, the TEVs uh, with the uh, small brake pad on it now we are swapping to a vented rotor so you see here it's got a solid piece and then an opening and then a solid piece, and then it has some structure in between. Let me see, do I have another good one? Uh, that's my main good picture. It looks like, yeah. So, um, 
this guy basically what this allows you to do is that the air could come through this way which is really kind of a bad placement here for the for the Kelsey Hayes because it's right in the air path it should be on the other side but that's neither here nor there so uh, air will rush through inside and it'll actually be able to cool off uh, the caliper it's I mean sorry the rotor itself so it keeps the rotor nice and cool so if you're going down a hill for extended brake sessions uh, this rotor will dissipate heat more quickly than uh, the solid rotor and because it has this air channel where air could get in between the two rotors without the pad being in the way so it gets inside here and it could absorb heat through convection which we talked about in a couple of my other videos from the rotor and be able to absorb that heat and uh, the let the, and then spin the air out so this guy is spinning around uh, at the speed of your wheel and it's catching air in here and uh, expelling it out and taking all that heat and dumping it into the air which is really you don't want heat to be maintained inside the rotor heat is part of friction but it doesn't have to stay in your equipment once you put friction once the once the heat is uh, present then you want to get rid of it as quickly as possible because if the heat builds up eventually your pads are, are you're going to get brake fade which are your pads are going to struggle to uh, can continue their braking performance so this is what we are going to so now we're getting a girling we're getting sorry kelsey hayes pad with big with big pads and we're going with vented rotors so and now we have a bigger pad that could take more heat and we also have a rotor that could also take more heat so if we go into a racing application this theoretically will form will perform better and again i'll talk about if it does so in the third video so stay tuned for all three videos so that's what we're doing now there's a couple the uh, first thing that you're going to want to do is we're, well, we're, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the total price of this project so uh, we have, I have $137 in on rockauto.com for two remanufactured calipers, a rotor, uh, two rotors, and uh, one set of brake pads from Wagner, which are ceramic brake pads. Now that's a total of $137. Now the, also what I did is I bought a, um, I bought a master brake uh, cylinder, which I also suggest if you haven't replaced it, your master brake cylinder, uh, if you do not have um, a booster, which I do not have a booster, uh, this is basically what you want to get. It looks like this, and this is what it looks like inside of the, um, the Bentley book. And you see here, it looks exactly the same as that picture. And it has this uh, bleed screw too at the top. So if you look up here, it says um, ATE without brake booster, basically, or brake servo. Uh, they call it a servo. I don't know why they call it a servo. So this has worked great for my car. So if, if you're looking for one, this is one that you could check. Uh, just enter the same exact stuff in. It's from Vintage Imports and Foreign Car Parts, whatever. 23 bucks, fast shipping. And this has worked great for me. Installed quickly, easily. Uh, bing bang boom done so um, next one is uh, you want to buy some um, some donor calipers now the reason why I did buy uh, remanufactured calipers or restored calipers but the reason why you want to buy uh, donor calipers is because the remanufactured calipers do not come with the mounting plate here and this mounting plate is what holds the pads on so the part that you get remanufactured is just the piston part just this part here and then you still need this piece here so this was off a really raggedy kind of scary looking uh 80 i don't know well this is a later year because it's got the long tail lights you can see it's got like biohazard stickers and stuff on it kind of scary stuff and it says that it, well, it says from, okay, Minnesota with 123,000 miles on it. And you can see that there was two rabbits that they pulled all these parts off of. So this was $23 with fast shipping, and that was the left side. And I got a right side off of the same rabbit as well that comes with the piston, that comes with the piston and the, uh, and the actual uh, piece itself and actually the bracket that holds 
the uh, pads. So again, you want to buy a donor caliber, whether you're going to buy uh, remanufactured or restored calibers or not, because you need this bracket right here that holds the pads on. Because uh, if you don't, you're just going to have the piston and nothing that the pads sit on that glide back and forth. So those are the two things that you want to get. And then whether or not you replace the master cylinder, if you haven't replaced the master cylinder, go ahead and do so. Uh, it will improve your braking performance as well. So uh, definitely this one's an optional. This one's a requ These ones are required because you want this bracket. If it's just a bracket, and you plan on getting remanufactured calipers, that will also work as well. But the remanufactured calipers from Rock Auto have a, I think it's, yeah, so core core each is $8. So if I sent them back, I'd get $16 back against $23, which is $46, so 16 So that's, in actuality, it cost me $30, $30 for these brackets, which is pretty expensive. But obviously these were super rusted. They were sitting around for a long time. So I didn't want to risk, you know, uh, having a seal go or something like that for, for um, what is it, for $22 each or for $30 each, I wasn't really gonna risk it. And so uh, that's what I would recommend. Um, I will probably send the cores back and have them remanufactured for somebody like yourself that will want to do this mod can get some new remanufactured. Uh, or restored calipers and okay so that's those are two things that you need to get um, is the calipers and then uh, optional is if you want the master cylinder now the next thing that you want to do is you want to buy your rotors and brake pads and also decide whether you're gonna run the calipers that you get which are you know 40 years old or if you're gonna get remanufactured calipers. I would suggest you just go, you know, stuff on this car is pretty cheap, so I would just go all the way and get the remanufactured calipers. And that will save you uh, some time and some money. And basically the whole, if you take $16 off of this, this is uh, one, um, $16, uh, 121. So 121 plus 50 plus 46 uh, is 167. dollars $167 for this mod. So uh, next thing that you want to do is you want to decide whether you want to use new uh, rubbers, uh, new rubber lines. They do have braided lines. I would not suggest running the braided lines. Now, let me show you guys why I would suggest that is oh that's the new line wrong picture is that on one of my sides i did have a break in the line i actually had the outside of this tube here this is on the other side i had it on the passenger side right underneath this collar there was a split in the line you could see the inner white line so uh i had an issue here where it was rubbing around this grommet and it eventually opened up this line and the line didn't leak but it might have been uh, it might have been when you press on the brake it might have been like uh, ballooning there in the section and you kind of lose pressure so i would suggest getting new lines now there is something interesting you might even need new lines cuz check this out so in the book i che I, I checked the whole book to make sure everything uh, before i did this mod to make sure that everything checked out now there are two different brake lines for the front. Hoses for the front brake caliper, hosing for girling caliper top are shorter than hoses for Kelsey Hayes or T Tev's ATE calipers bottom and have a left hand thread on the connection identified by groove. So there's like a little groove here. Now, so basically what that means is that if you're gonna do this mod to go to the Kelsey Hayes uh, calipers and you have a girling, you need to buy the hoses because the hoses on the uh, girling are left-hand thread, but the Kelsey Hayes are right-hand thread. So obviously it's not gonna work. The, you buy the calipers and you can't thread this hose on there. So if you have a girling, you need to buy these hoses. 
Um, so I, if, if you have a Rearling, uh, hands down, you have to buy the hose. Now what you're going to do is, uh, I did not buy, I actually bought them at a local store because I decided to later on, but basically you're just going to look here, you know, right hand thread or left hand thread. So in this case, uh, left hand thread is for the girling, so you're going to want right hand thread. And they're both the same for either side, so you just buy two of these for $7. I mean, you could go through these and look at, look at the info and see if it's right hand thread or left hand thread. If it does not say do not risk it, I mean you could look here, there's no groove there, but yeah. Just make sure that they are indeed right hand thread. Because if they're not, they're not gonna work. So if you have grilling, you're gonna have to buy it anyways. Make sure you get right hand thread. And if you have uh, tivs or teeves, make sure that uh, you decide whether you want to buy new hoses or not uh, and if not chances are they highly they highly uh, they have big chances that they are at a local store around you so you can go there and just buy them uh, in the middle of project let's say you check if you have an extra car obviously if you have uh, an extra car you could go uh, if you see any sort of uh, lesions like I had on my hosing uh, you could go and uh, check that out and, and get uh, replacement so um, that's what I would suggest. So now you're adding another, you're adding an optional, if you have grilling, obviously it's mandatory, but an optional either $8 or $12 on top of everything. So um, then you want to get, the next thing you wanna get is you wanna get your rotors and your brake pads. Now this is where I'm gonna to have to talk about more on the part three is whether or not you should use ceramics or not, or go with organics. Now, the difference here is that now I'm actually buying something from an 84 Rabbit, which I'm actually buying from the, uh, it's basically the GTI. So now I'm buying the GTI parts because these parts are similar to what come on a uh, 83, 84 GTI. So um, here we have the rotors. So you can see here that they have solid. So this is a solid rotor and this is a, uh, oops, and this is a vented rotor. Now what you have to watch for is that the pad thickness is different for vented or for solid rotors. The vented rotors, the rotors are three quarter of an inch thick instead of half an inch. So what you have to watch out for is that most of the pads are thick for the half inch solid rotors. So if you buy the too thick a pad, it will uh, basically not fit. So you, you basically need to lose some pad thickness. Uh, to be able to fit the solid rotors in there, but yeah, trust me, it's worth it. So um, that's here in the pad. So I bought some Wagners. Now the Wagner, uh, I think it's, it's basically these. So these are basically what I have. These are the Wagners. Um, but these have the, um, I don't think, yeah, I think mine were thermal quiet, but I don't think it had the backing on here. And these are ceramic, so you have three uh, three different pad types to pick from. You have organic, ceramic, or semi-metallic. Organic and ceramic, uh, they tend not to leave, uh, they tend not to damage the rotor. Uh, they're not as abrasive, so they don't damage the rotor as much, but they're not as, uh, they don't have as high a friction as a semi-metallic. Semi-metallic and uh, there's also full metallic, but full metallic tends not to be used on uh, streetcar applications. So semi-metallic is generally for uh, more if you're doing racing or anything like that, or performance driving, or if you have a motor swap in there and you're pushing like 200 horsepower or whatever, then you might want the semi-metallic for more stopping power. Uh, but what you're going to have is you're going to is you're going to eat away at the rotor and your pads are going to disintegrate faster. So generally at that point when you buy new pads, you're going to have to have the rotor resurfaced or have to buy a new rotor. So uh, be looking out for that. Ceramic, they do not do uh, as far as what I've seen so far with these uh, Wagner uh, Thermal Quiets is that they do not eat away at the caliper as much, uh, uh, very much at all. And actually, after a week of driving it, I still have the cross hatching on the rotors. So, because um, if you look here, this is with it installed, and you can see that it's got cross hatch, and that is still there. It hasn't even worn through the cross hatching yet. 
So uh, you could decide there. They have all different types, and pretty much the one thing that you want to look for is that we if we go into info, notice the pad thickness here, 0.595, right? And now if we look at some of the, so you see here that they're all this style now at this point. They do not have any of the small pads. So if we go here, we might be able to find, so here it says Kelsey Hayes uh, pads, but we might be able to find some thicker ones. See, like this one's probably too thick. This one's probably a three quarter inch. And also watch out, try not to buy one that does not have the info on the thickness because you might buy some that are too thick. And if you can, you can get the ones that have more pad. See, these got bevels um, and that have a bigger pad area because uh, as you see on mine, they have like a slightly smaller pad area. So watch out for that as well. So. Basically, what I'm going to do to show you guys is I'm going to go to the 79 Rabbit. So 1979 Rabbit, and I'm going to show you basically what you're looking at. So 1979 Rabbit. Let's just look at the diesel. Brakes. Brake pads. Now, if we look here at the small brake pads. Okay, so it says 61 millimeters. So it's about an inch because so, it's about 6.25 millimeters in an inch and times 10, sorry, in a quarter of an inch. So four times that is about 24, 25 millimeters for an inch. So um, that times three, it says it's about three inches. I doubt that. It's not three inches. Hmm. That's not right, but you can look here. Oh, there you go. So let's just say that it is this 61, and these are uh, 140. So these are, yeah, about two and a half times bigger. So that's what we're upgrading. Okay, so now if you look at these guys, let's see. Usually it's the Wagners that have the thickness. As you see here, it does not have the thickness. So again, do not buy ones that do not say the thickness of the pad because you're probably going to uh, get something too thick and it's not going to work. Okay, here's a Wagner. So right here, look at the friction material thickness, 0.728. So the difference here is 0.595, so a little bit over half an inch, versus 0.728. So this is for the semi, and you can see these are semi-metallic pads. So these are for a, uh, these are for a solid rotor, and these are for a vented rotor because they are thinner, right? So now you could fit the thicker three quarter inch vented rotor in there instead of the half inch solid rotor. Uh, so you want to get the ones that are around 0.6 versus the ones that are around 0.73 because you're not gonna be able to fit them inside of your car. So uh, if you're gonna go on here, make sure you only buy the ones that have the thickness or call up the company and give them the part number and figure it out from uh, there whether that is the right thickness. Around here will work. This is what I used, so uh, it should work if, if this is the case here, that you that is what you used. Okay. So that's what you're gonna wanna do. Yeah, so you could pick basically any of these in here. They're all the same style. The Kelsey Hayes is, uh, these are all Kelsey Hayes. You could tell by the little alligator clip. So you could go here and uh, pick whatever one you want, whether you want semi-metallic, faster, uh, harder braking, but more abrasive on the rotor. So you're going to have to go through pads and rotors faster. If you want to go semi-metallic, they tend to be quiet, if not silent. And also when you wear semi-metallic, uh, it creates like yellow dust instead of black dust. So if you have, like me, uh, BBS aluminum wheels, they uh, do not get, they do not look as bad because they don't get that black dust. They get uh, yellow dust and you can't really see it against the, um, against the, the, the aluminum. And also they could take in more heat and because uh, a lot of them are filled with copper, as well, they uh, accept more heat and also put more heat onto the caliper, so it kind of spreads the heat out a little better. So, um, as far as right now, I think that the, the 
uh, I have not run either the semi-metallic or the organic after this mod, so I can't exactly quote on the rest of them. But right now the ceramic seems to be working okay. Again, come to video 3 for my final recommendations for that. So that's what you want to do there. So pick from here a 1984 Rabbit and a brake pad and then go through here and pick one. Again, it's at around the half inch uh, thickness is what's going to work uh, for you. So like these ones here. Yeah, point, uh, 0.595. All right, so you pick that. And then you go in here and you pick your rotor. So either, you know, whichever one you want. I think I got these ones, the uh, Ray Bestos, which are uh, the R-line. And you can see here that they are uh, nominal thicknesses, 0 0.780, which uh, the other one is uh, the solid rotor. If we go back to here, and if they have a Ray R-line solid, it is a breaker thickness nominal is 0.472 versus uh, 0.780. So you can see it's uh, almost a quarter inch thicker uh, than um, and thinner. And also it uh, it has, actually weighs more. Both the Kelsey Hayes and the vented rotors uh, weigh more. So th uh, so also you could even if they weren't vented, you could dump more heat into them because it takes more energy to heat it up to the same temperature uh, depending on weight. So so now we have um, now we have pads, we have rotors. Now you want to look here at you go in here to calipers uh, and we see here that basically you get these two here. These are the ones I'm running. You want to make sure that it says the Kelsey Hayes original caliper with metal piston and use those. You could do these other ones some of these ones, I guess it's just like different different manufacturer, I guess. And they look better than that. They don't look like that. I, th I think I had the Rebistos. I think I got these ones. Um, yeah, so these are the ones I got. I got Rebistos, yeah. So I got these. Uh, you can see they look way better. So I would suggest running with these. They have a nice coating on them, a nice anti-rust coating. As you can see here, they got this silver, this nice silver coating on it. So, yeah. So then now you have your rotors for $30, and then if you did buy the uh, the calipers, the old calipers online, like I have here, uh, then you can uh, send them in and get $10 refund per side. So now we have calipers, we have brake pads, we have rotors, we have uh, hoses, and we have the optional uh, brake cylinder, which I bought here, but uh, I think... And so the reason why I bought that there is I could not find one on here for the master cylinder. Because if you look here, none of them really, I mean, this one might be it. No, so this is not it. This one's not it. Because what you need is you need those two on the bottom. Those two on the bottom are for the... Uh, are for the um, the brake light. So most of, pretty much all of these are for the brake servo. You need this one here because these these two ones here, this one and this one, are for the uh, brake lights. So I would just get it off of uh, eBay. So you have that. You have your calipers, and you you have you got your master cylinder, maybe maybe not, and you have your hoses. Okay, so now we have everything. Or in it about a hundred, hundred and sixty dollars or so, depending on uh, 160, 170 dollars, depending on if you got the hoses or the master cylinder, or if you bought a caliper at a really good deal, or if you bought the remanufactured caliper. Now let's go through the mod itself and how to do it. And we're up for the 40 minutes. So you take the you take the tire off, and you're at this. You basically see this. You have your tebs here, and you have your solid rotor, most likely. There is a Torx in the front, and you take that Torx off, and uh, you, oh sorry, so first you'd probably unbolt this. There is two bolts that hold this piece on. You don't have to worry about separating the cylinder from the actual bracket itself. There's two bolts in the back uh, that you just take off, and uh, the whole thing comes off. Then you undo this Torx, and uh, the rotor comes off. 
and see here this is how the tips you can see that this thing kind of rotated on me but here's the here's the kind of return clip and then you are going to set up your um, your uh, calipers for your um, Kelsey Hayes I set this up wrong I have two of the same pads that's not how you're supposed to do it but you can kind of see here here's the uh, Ray, Ray Bestus and uh, all the remanufactured caliper and then here's the old bracket and I've lubed it up here. Uh, I don't think you actually need lube, but yeah. Here is the new hose screwed in, so you're gonna wanna screw it in on the bench while you're working on it. And uh, just go, it, it, if you can see it didn't go all the way, it didn't seat, but that's fine, it's not leaking, there's no brake fluid, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, you can see here that these are the long ones uh, for the Wagner Thermal Quiet and then it has the small ones. So basically you have, you can see here that you have two different ones, right? And here you can see them installed and then they have this clip. Now the thing with this clip is that with the Wagners, um, and you're also gonna have to look through your, um, your brake, uh, your, your, your pads first before you do this to look for this issue is that if you'll notice on these, there's like a little hook right here. It's really hard to see and don't strain your eyes too much. You'll get a migraine looking at, trying to look at this picture. And I'll show you guys again later uh, when we look at the car, I'll have all this stuff in front of me, in front of you guys and I'll show you guys uh, practically with everything in my hand how to do this. So there's this little hook here and what this little hook actually does, and, and you'll notice here that there's a hook here, hook here, even though it's blurry, you could see it and there's no hook here no hook here, no hook here. So what that does is that holds the um, anti-rattle clip. And basically what this does is that the pads, the the little uh, claw on the pad that grabs onto this, is w the hole is way oversized compared to uh, this, this piece here. It's like another uh, eighth of an inch bigger than um, than the actual piece here. So what this does is this takes out that that gap so it doesn't from that diesel engine moving from that diesel engine running it doesn't rattle around inside the calipers so pretty much what I had to do because mine did not have that I had to file a groove into the pad to get the uh, clip to fit so if you have that same issue just go ahead and do that just file down this uh, these pads until the clip fits underneath you can see here here it doesn't look perfect like in the book but that's because I'm running aftermarket. And you can see here that it tends to get stuck. Uh, try to file it a little bit at a time. This is probably gonna be the longest portion of it, is to file it to get it to fit uh, right to where it doesn't slide all the way into the back of the the back of the, 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 the caliper itself. Now, I believe it is the small piece. It is the small, the small piece here that goes against, yeah. So it's a small piece here that goes against the piston and the longer piece that goes up front. So here's the short piece, and here's the long piece that, that goes up front. Uh, so the small piece goes against the piston, uh, the long piece goes back over here towards where the end of the, cal uh, end of the caliper is. And another issue is that these, these splash plates, which basically if you run over a puddle, it keeps it from splashing onto the back side of your rotor. So because uh, the front is covered with the disc, uh, covered with your wheel, so it kind of protects it from water. Because really what you do not want to do is have a uh, caliper, a hot caliper, I mean hot caliper, hot rotor, uh, breaking for a long time, and then you run over a puddle, and you get cold water onto a red hot uh, rotor. That's what, ca that's what generally causes warped rotors. So this guy is very important. But you can notice these little hooks here. And what this actually, uh, this is actually designed for the ATE, the Teves, or if you have the Girling, it's actually the one that you have on there is designed for that caliper. Now, what I noticed at the first day of install, I noticed that the at, at night, it was like 10 o'clock at night, was that the um, Kelsey Hayes do not fit inside of this caliper, uh, inside, of, uh, inside of the splash guard. So what happens is you try to put it in there and the cal and the the bracket that holds the pads will actually hit against these edges here. So what you have to do is you have to modify this. You have to cut this open a little bit more so your caliper is clear. So here is basically what I did. 
I went in and if you notice I basically followed this angle down and then I followed this angle in right so now you can see this is flush here and then I went straight in here you know straight in here flush here right and then get a file and hit these edges so if you ever you know if I sell the car or if I ever go in and I run my hand in there I won't cut my hand open on uh, on any sort of uh, any of the burrs that come off of cutting it and to cut it you're just going to use a regular angle grinder or something else that you have maybe even shears if you want to cut this guy open and now you can see there so now when we fit and you can see more here and th this is normal this is actually how you get the thing on to this guy is it's got a split here and so you just kind of flex it you twist it and flex it over this to get this piece on and off and now you can see it clears just barely here but uh, one thing that is different and I'll show you guys on the car is that this actually does not need to be that deep so what I probably should have done is I probably should have just went back like this here instead of going this deep so if you look from the front it probably should have just been like that because the main thing that was an issue was up here was right at this point so now what you can do is you can see the back of my rotor from about this area here I'll show you guys that on the car but you can see here this is the issue so from here up it should probably be solid so you can't see on the inside and then basically what you do is uh, there are here there are two bolts here that go onto this piece and this basically are pins that allow this to be an adjusting caliper they move in and out uh, to allow it uh, to allow the caliper to adjust for pad wear so that it always gives you the best brake feel that it possibly can so uh, you have those two bolts and then you just bolt this guy back on with the same exact bolt so the coolest thing is that everything here is uh, just plug and play except for this issue here with the splash guard so this was the only issue that I had to adapt uh, the Kelsey Hayes to a German to a European car to the German car and you can see here here's my uh, new rubber hose over here perfect fit no problems at all doesn't leak no issues then uh, obviously you want to put your new rotor on first after you've uh, test after you test fitted your calipers you test fitted it uh, you cut after you cut the the splash guard so it fits you put it on there uh, okay it looks good it's gonna bolt up now go ahead and put your rotor take those off put your rotor on put your torques on slide your calipers over obviously you want your pads opened up because again the th they're the these pads are like maximum thickness for what you could have with this rotor to give you maximum pad life so you're gonna have to open them almost all the way but if you open them too far the pad that's near the piston is gonna fall off the bracket so be careful with that and then bolt it in, get it nice and tight, get this guy semi-tight, don't go too crazy on this Torx because you're just going to strip it. Torx are not really uh, the best for uh, torquing down because this guy will just spin on you, so be careful with that. And then you see here, this is what it's like installed. You can see the vented rotor here, and you can see the pads. You can see how close I am to the edge here. Obviously this could go this way a little further, this could go uh, um, this way a little further but you can see uh, the pad and you can see the rotor with the vent uh, sticking through it and you can see here uh, my hose coming out and then what I would suggest from what I had here is uh, from the last one this is on the driver's side so this is the side that I had the uh, lesion inside of the, the the cut inside of the hosing I would probably not stick it back in here just so that that's probably what was happening was it was rubbing here and then this was causing stress of the hose so it's stressing the hose so I thinking that these two are supposed to be so you could put this thing in here and they just close these two together so it will still allow it to kind of move in that section but over here with that grommet that came with the ATE you saw originally that there was a grommet here and the line was going through it number one my new line didn't come with a grommet on it and it, I think it causes way too much stress on this line because this is a pretty, even though it's rubber, it's still a pretty stiff line. So I'll just give it the room that it needs by just letting it sit there. And then maybe uh, tape, tape this thing off, tape the sharp edges off. 
so that you don't have any issues. And so th this again, this is stock, and you can see the difference in pad here. This is the pad, this is the stock pad thickness, this is the uh, passenger side. And you can see here that here's the grommet with the hose mounted there. And it still has these two things, but uh, you can see that right here, it's, and you can see it's pretty taunt here. So this is just gonna be a pressure point that it just rips the hose off. I didn't have, a, a, you know, causes a lot of strain on the hose. Um, so yeah, I would just, I would probably avoid this uh, and just have it sit out over here and then tape this thing up. And here again, here's the clip, and here's the rotor, and here's the pads. And then you're going to see uh, that I have these, yeah, see the, the original uh, splash guard. And I noticed on that side that I had a broken uh, CV boot, so I have to fix that. You can see here the short side is on the piston side, and the long side is on the non-piston side. And then here you can see from uh, our new setup to our old setup. And uh, yeah, so that's basically the mod all together. If I knew, if I had a video like this on how to do it, I probably could have done it in, um, a, in probably a day. It took me two days, a uh, Saturday and a Sunday, and I was done by, uh, I was done after like uh, an hour and a half on a Sunday. And after I knew what to do, it took me about an hour and a half. It, it, it probably would have taken me an hour and a half. It took me like 30 minutes to finish one side. And then, uh, or it took me about an hour to finish one side and then 30 minutes to finish the other side after I got used to it. So this is what you're gonna wanna do. Um, uh, before, you're gonna want to set up your, your tubing, your uh, brake line. You're gonna want to attach your brake line. Um, first, on the bench, you're gonna wanna set up your pads and your clips, because your clips are gonna be the thing that takes you a long time. So set up your clips, and the reason why I set up, say, do the, do the calipers like a weekend before, because your car is not gonna be down. So if the Rabbit's the only car that you have, you'll still be able to drive it, because you've bought all new equipment here. So th you haven't touched the car yet. So set up your calipers, uh, get your clip, to work inside your pads by filing the pads down so the clip goes underneath it and have those guys all waiting with the hosing attached then you're ready to go and tightened as as good as you could get it without obviously stripping it then what you're going to want to do is uh you're going to want to uh, get to the car take off your master cylinder uh, take off your master cylinder do do not use a crescent wrench use uh, an actual sized wrench for those guys, because if you strip those heads off of those uh, those little fittings, uh, you're going to be in trouble. I used a crescent wrench. I, I did a pretty good job. I should have probably used a, a regular uh, wrench. And um, yeah, and for the bleeding, I think these are three eighths uh, for the bleed valves. I I will show you guys on the car uh, when I get to that. So after you have your calipers done, and also if you want to, you could put some grease up here. If you want to to help them slide back and forth a little easier or some grease on top of the clips or some grease so and then some grease on the bottom to help these guys slide back and forth a little further and after you put it together uh, or before you put it together before you put the pads in make sure that this this bracket can move smoothly back and forth on the uh, on the uh, on these pins here make sure these pins are nice and lubed if you if you have the original calipers off of an old rabbit the remanufactured they're already pre-lubed so they're really good and these rubbers are really good so it slides really nice so you, chances are you're probably not going to have to worry about it about the remanufactured uh, calipers um, so you have that guy done you have your brake hose attached you have your pads in now you're ready to get on the car like i said you're going to go in there uh, you're going to replace the master cylinder if you decide to get a new one so you're gonna do that first, bolt everything together. That's gonna to take you a while. If you use a crescent wrench, if you use a regular wrench, it shouldn't take that long. Um, and then you're obviously you're gonna use a bigger wrench for the brake line, for the brake lights. And the brake lights, uh, you're gonna to wanna to pre-twist them to the left. And then, so when you put them, when you turn them to the right, tighten them, uh, it doesn't screw up the wires. It doesn't rip the wires out of the plugs. Then you're gonna to wanna to take your rotors off uh, sorry. Take your uh, take your wheel take your wheel off. Unbolt the two bolts for your caliper, 
and then uh, undo the hosing over here. Uh, undo the hosing in the back here uh, for your new brake line and put some rags down here so it could catch the oil or a drop or a pan or something down here so it catch the brake line. And then if you want, put a piece of tape or something over the top because there ends up to be a lot of dust here and you don't want the dust to get out on your um, inside that little hole and plug that hole up. Then you have issues with your with your braking. So once you pull this guy down, uh, first I would clean this area off here of any dust or dirt and spray it off with carb cleaner or whatever because once you pull this thing out, you're gonna knock the dirt into the hose. So watch out for that. Because the hose is basically just, the brake line's just uh, shooting straight up here. So once you pull this off, it's gonna, the dirt's gonna fall into this hole and right into your brake line. So make sure that you do that. So you take this off. Now you can remove your caliper, move your caliper out of the way. You can take this off before you remove the caliper. Um, because this stays stationary, this guy stays stationary, this, this piece underneath moves. So I take that back. Before you unbolt the caliper, un, undo this brake line here. And then so now it's free, and uh, once you take this off, you put a piece of tape on top, and you uh, pull this off, and then you can just unbolt the caliper, and then take this off. And if you have new hose, and it's attached to your new calipers, if you're gonna use a new hose, uh, you could just take this whole thing off. Don't even bother taking the hose off. Just if you just take the whole thing off. So uh, then now you have your rotor off, and now you have your uh, caliper off. Go ahead and take your rotor off with that Torx. Um, as you saw, where did it go? Here. And then take this Torx, and the rotor comes off. And then now you are ready to. You see the plate here. And you're gonna want this is what your plate should look like if you have a Teves uh, girdling should probably be similar, and you're going to open this up how I showed you here, and I'll talk a little bit more about this on the hands-on uh, when I shoot that video, and you're gonna open it up like this so now your caliper goes on and it clears correctly, then uh, you're gonna test fit it and file it down, make it nice uh, so that it's really really nice here. And then, uh, so after you file it and you've test fitted it, everything fits right, your caliper's clear, uh, clear the uh, splash guard, uh, you're ready to install the rotor. So now you're gonna just put on the rotor and you're going to put on the uh, Torx. Uh, then you're gonna put on the caliper, right? And it already has your hose pre-attached. So you're gonna open your pads up, make sure your pads are open nice and wide put it over the caliper, bolt it in from the back. If you have to, uh, turn your, your steering wheel so you can see better in the back. And obviously be careful, use jack stands. Uh, and also a heavy duty like three ton jack or whatever. You know, just, just be safe, these cars are very light, but still be safe doing it. And now that your caliper is being held up, uh, you can now install the brake line. So take off your piece of tape, install the brake line, and uh, yeah, you're basically done. You can bolt your tire on and move on to the other side and do the exact same thing on the other side. Then obviously at the end when you do both sides, you're gonna bleed your brakes uh, with brand new, I would suggest going with uh, dot .4 uh, fluid instead of dot .3. Dot .3 fluid and dot .4 fluid are, are compatible with the same systems. So uh, brake uh, dot .4 has a little bit higher boiling point. So if you're in racing applications or even general driving applications, it's just better, so just use DOT4 and uh, run a new DOT4 fluid all the way through the hosing. Get all the dirt and everything that's inside that hosing, everything out uh, through this brake line here, uh, through this bleeder on both sides. And then because if you replace the master cylinder, you're gonna have air in there for the, for the back. So you're gonna also have to be, bleed the back. And that is basically it for the swap. So, Stay tuned for our on uh, on car video, and uh, I'll show you guys some more things uh, there. So now, the last two minutes here for an hour, wow, an hour video, my longest video I've ever shot, um, is what am I going to do with these tevs for the back uh, for these tevs? So what I'm thinking is I'm thinking I'm going to modify the back drums and put the tevs on the back 
uh, on the back uh, and have discs on the front. So big discs on the front, small discs on the back, which is usually what they do. Even their newer GTI, even the 2016 GTI, or even the, the Mark 7 or Mark 6 GTI, they have big calipers up front and small calipers up on the back. But I'm going to have to do some stuff there, so you might see another video on that because I'm going to have to make my own uh, parking brake, pretty much, because these don't have any setup for a parking brake. So stay tuned for that when that video comes. So uh, that's pretty much it here. Stay tuned for video two and uh, my final thoughts and my verdict on uh, video three. And I will see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Uh, subscribe if you like these videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Take it easy. Peace.